out. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, good night, wherever you are. Welcome to War in the Webway. My name's Ollie. I'm here with my esteemed colleague, Alan. Say hello, Alan. Hello, everybody. Hello. <laughs> we all get slicker <laughs> with that every time. Um, and we're back with another episode. We're flying through these. This is like episode eight or something? It doesn't feel kind of like real, does it? No. Like we, this, was, this was still an idea for me, but <laughs> I've got no idea what we're doing with it, but it's fine. It's fine. Um, well, yeah, we're just going with the flow, aren't we, I suppose? Yeah, I'm very chilled out and going with the flow sort of person. Um, what are we talking about tonight? So, again, kind of moving on from last week, um, you know, where we talked about are we a difficult faction to play? Now we're going to talk about are we score points? You know, um, how we actually win games, you know, um, tips and tricks, tactics, what we do, how we go about um, looking to get, you know, that 70, 80, 90 points, you know, potentially 100 points that we know or will win us a game, either in a tournament, a friendly, or a kind of like a, uh, you know, a game at a local gaming store, something like that. Um, so, yeah, that's what it's on about today. Um, and, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, so I think... This is one of those things that on the surface seems like, oh, it's obvious. Um, and it's probably going to be the most relevant episode, at least at the start, for any army, not just custodies. So if you do play multiple armies, you can use some of the, what we're going to talk about um, for, for for that. But you track your win rate, your go first win rate, your go second win rate, and you track how many points you get a game, don't you? Do you know off the top of your head how many points a win for you is? Because I, I, th- I think it's strangely higher than I was expecting for a Custodius player. Um, I was expecting maybe 82 on average, but I think you're pushing up higher than that, right? So, uh, average victory point for a win is 89. Um, I think it's like 89.8 something. Which is, which is a lot um, of points. That's a, that's a very, very high points to score. Um, <laughs> I guess there's there's lots of different variables, right? Like who you're playing against, what factions, um, uh, your local meta. I think uh, what I would say is the majority of my games, because I've obviously got a two-year-old who uh, consumes my life right now, um, the majority of games I can get are tournament games. Yeah. So I'll, you know, I'll build up enough brownie points to be able to go away for a weekend or something. Uh, or, you know, go away for an RTT. So I'd, I'd probably say 95% of my games are are tournament games. So build my lists around being able to score high is probably why um, why it is a bit higher than, than, than normal, I think. So no, but, uh, I, I say that, but what do you think a normal... You know, what do you think a normal win would be for so, Custodies? Well, here's the thing. So I'm, I'm looking at my Chaos um, VP, and my win's 85.4. So, and, and CSM, it is not, it's not even arguable, CSM have easier ways to score than Custodies do. And that, that's why I was saying that, like... Yeah, but you've got demons, haven't you? Yeah, no, no. But, but even then, that's, that's four points low on average across, I don't know how many games... Uh, 50, 58 games is what I tracked. It's four points on average lower than what you can get. So, okay, that's a great tra- transition. How do you score games when you're building a list? What what is the primary thing that you're thinking about? It must be scoring. It must be putting enough pressure on the opponent to just keep the scoreboard ticking over, right? Um, pre data slate it was okay. Post data slate it's survivability. <laughs> durability um, because we we die quickly now or we can do if it's if, if we don't have enough durability so three day to slate I was more concerned around right, I've got this 10 man blob I'm going to put a shield captain with it it's going to go on the objectives I'm going to get tactical whatever I pull I'll be able to do quite easily yeah. things like that um, now I'm more concerned about keeping my things alive to be able to score points if the opportunity arises for them to do so. Okay. So, is that primary? I don't actually build. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, 
the opportunity is always going to be there for primary because obviously depending on the mission but obviously i'm moving my units i'm fighting on objectives i've got incentives to do so especially if i'm running guard yep um the it's more around the secondaries because okay. the um secondary side of things is what can if we get a bit of a bad run in secondaries over the course of a couple of turns for us it can really knock us out of out of sync yep agree and so um have having units alive more units further into the game can enable us that when we do get a few good cards then we can able to perform those actions or do those get into those quarters or, or kill those units you know on an objectives to get storm hostile something like that you know yeah no that's, that's fair i think the, the one thing to so to caveat again we, we do it most episodes but just so people are aware we're talking majority majorly tournament play rather than pick up and play and you know what your opponent might have we're talking random you don't know what you're going to get but you know the missions and that allows you to prepare the primary game that allows you to know if it's a hold one hold two if it's a hold one hold more if it's a hold two hold three which i don't think is a game a thing at the moment um but you have that knowledge to all of you prepare for so when you draw and and sorry just to backstab a second you are major, mostly playing tactical right not fixed Matchup dependent, obviously. Yes. Like, but you, your, your list is obviously built to do tactical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, apart from, uh, I mean, you mentioned matchup dependent. Um, I think everyone knows by now that into GSC, you play you would, you would be doing fixed, you know, in into how you'd be doing fixed if you've got a lot of crisis. Um, you know, it, I, I have a few um, utility pieces in my list which enable me to go into fixed yeah if my opponent gives up an easy second one um so the majority what, of the time nine over 95 percent of the time it's tactical do you take deploy as your m m normal fix or behind yeah device? it will be in an uh, deploy and i'll settle for um 15 so three times five uh and then if i can get if i can get more um because I'm doing it in their home objective with their Kaladas assassin, yep. and that's just a benefit. But I'll settle for it on the middle through my sisters, or through um, worst case scenario through um, Draxus's squad. Um, I just slap her so she can't be shot, uh, providing she actually doesn't roll a one. That it is. But yeah, yeah, that, that's kind of what it is. But I, I think you're absolutely right to mention about the, on the list building side because. Your ability to score points starts there. Yes. Um, what units you place into your army. And, I've, and I've, I've, you we've, will, we've discussed this quite a lot. Sorry to interrupt, but we've discussed this quite a lot. Of You have to build your lists knowing what can score and you can still win the game or kill things or whatever. If you've got 300 point units of guard and wardens with characters that you are relying to do investigate signals, like it's not a great it's not a great look so you do need chaff to score a lot of the actions yeah and it's it's a weird one because we you know when you break it down and you look at our army quite basically we've got a lot of really tough units yep. so our opponents are normally incentivized to kill our wiki units first yep um just through ease really clearing our assets clearing our option our ability to score um so we either counter that by bringing more weak units on, on the board or um, throwing our stronger units forward quickly to divert the firepower onto them. And that's, I think, it's critical. So when we talk about putting utility units in, scoring units in, all of your units are working to score your points, or there are a few of them are the... Only a few of them are actually the ones that are doing the um, the actual action. Um, does that make sense, or is, am I talking rubbish here? No, no, no. It, 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 well, I understand what, what you're saying, um, and it's actually it's, it's actually a really interesting kind of war on the webway slash Alan top tip, which is if you are playing the game, and I'm paraphrasing, but correct me if I'm if I'm wrong here. But if you're playing the game and you're finding that your chaff units are going too quickly, maybe throw throw forwards all your big stuff. 
because then your opponent panics, has to kill your big stuff, and your chaff survives to do the actions. If actually Canada's assassin, you put them in the corner because you know they're going to disappear. If it's your sisters that you need in the middle, who's going to be targeting sisters if you've got two blocks of wardens running down your throat kind of thing? Um, that's a very interesting, interesting, uh, but fair point about like how to score points. Yeah, I mean, it's... Um... <laughs> Okay, so case in point, I had um, in one of the previous kind of like Wild Boys meetups that we did, I was playing against Nick's um, Adari, and he had, he had two night spinners, and I'd thrown both my warden squads, mm-hmm. one in rapid ingress, and then one in deep strike behind him. Okay. Um, and the whole the whole principle there was. I knew that he needed to basically clear some of my weaker chaff. And so he had to night spinner them. So otherwise I'd score big. And so all of a sudden I had two units of um, wardens in the back that I popped for, feeling the pain on both of them. Yep. He, had his, um, he had his wraith guard shoot into them. Killed a couple. I still had two, well, one and a half units that just unleashed into his back line. Interesting. And um, so it can swing. You, you can use it both ways. You can you can direct them onto um, your um, of heavier units mm-hmm. to, to buy your chuff unit space to score, mm-hmm. or you you can say, for example, you know that they're going to shoot that sisters over there. The only thing with enough range to do it is that night spinner or that basilisk, mm-hmm. but they're going to get a lot of value for killing it. So, if they get a lot of value, you need to get a lot of value for it. So, the unit right up in front of them, heavier unit, you know, a stronger unit that's difficult to shift. If they can't shift it, yeah, or if they don't even try, yeah. then then you're gonna you're gonna get on their objective at the back, or you're gonna kill a unit, or you're gonna take you know you take your pound of flesh really. But it's a it, it's a it's kind of match up. You kind of need to, in my opinion, with custodies, you need to. Um, there'll be times where you you just kind of like oh, you just need to kill. You just need to go through it, throw your units forward, yeah. kill them as fast as you can. And you'll organically get points here and there. Yeah. You know, you'll be you'll you'll see a blob of them on an objective, you'll go and kill them and then all of a sudden one of the cards you'll have drawn would have been no prisoners and then the other one would have been storm hostile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're in a you in a good you know so, okay. um, so there's times where you need to do that. Yeah, yeah. That's really interesting. So we're talking quite generally and I think one thing that might be interesting to go through is like going into a vehicle heavy meta and going into a horde meta or like how you would score differently. But just just before we do that when when you set up for a game ignore the list for the time being it's going to be a generic list let's say it's what people would expect it's a warden's blobs it's some guard blobs it's a couple of the inquisitors or well, it's an inquisitor it's a callous assassin so she can do the actions a couple of units of sisters and let's just say for, for whatever reason you're running a two-man unit of alaris whatever you set up are you are, when you've set up and it's your deployment are you now thinking how do i get my primary of uh, which i'm assuming you are um, I'm not trying to lead you down in any kind of blind routes here, but are you then thinking <laughs> what happens if they shift one of the units on the primary? How do I get another unit back on there? Is that what you're doing in deployment zone, or are you thinking that as the game develops and you're continually thinking about where your primary comes from? Because when I play my CSM, and this this is a weakness in my game, and I oh, fully hold up my hand, I'm already planning out that I put out some chaff, they kill the chaff, I put out my next unit of strong of strength, and then. Like I can make sure if it's a hold one, hold two. I know I can get two from all all game. I know I can get two all game because I ha- I am already setting that out on deployment. Are you doing the same thing with custodians? No, <laughs> um, I hate running ahead. <laughs> um, <laughs> there you go. That's, that's, with, that's the next. That's with, the next war in the web very top tier. Don't plan ahead. <laughs> Just, just roll dice. <laughs> um, because I, I often find that, that when I do, <laughs> no, when I do, 
Um, I mean, I mean, before I get before I get to the tabletop, right? Um, I do not like to do that right. because I often um, like to start planning when I see my opponent at the start, who his characters are with, who's got the enhancements, who's in deep strike. Wow. And then once I know that information, yeah. then I'm thinking, right, okay, um, what is his overall strategic aim here? Is it to wipe me? Is it to score points? So say, for example, if I'm going into uh, an Eldari list that's got lots of small units, lots of quick units, yeah. and then a few uh, Wraith Guard or whatever, and I know he's going to go fixed. Yeah. And, and then I can stop planning that. As soon as he says fixed as well, I'm like, okay, okay, so he's going to go... I know what fixed he's doing. I know his game plan. It's going. To, how do I counter that? Um, if I'm going into something like GSC, it's the same thing. They're going to take fixed every day. If I go into something like um, Black Templars, which are also quite doing quite well, if you if you look at Games Workshop Meta Watch, you know, I I look at how many Redemptors has he got? What's he going to do? How much anti arm has he got? Has he got a blob of a Terminator's with a feel no pain going on a character, all that kind of stuff, and and then I'll take that and I'll think to myself, right, what is his game plan, right, and how can I score points around that? Because we used to be able to dictate the terms of of engagement with yes. ten man bricks, which yeah. we used to be able to do that, and now with how much death wounds there are, we've got no defense. We can't really do that because anything we put in the open is dead. So we need to be a bit more kind of like, I like to give my opponent the initiative. Interesting. Um, and then, and then I'll, I'll usually take them apart or try to take them apart with wardens because most people underestimate how doable they are, right? Especially on the fourth and the pain turn. So I try to kind of gauge how I can do that. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes it's an absolute disaster. <laughs> um. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to like think on my feet about because I, I had a bunch of questions, but you obviously shattered those by saying you don't plan ahead. Um. <laughs> well, well, I, I do plan ahead, but it's not like you know when I'm or the tournament where I'm looking at the at the mission one, mission two, mission three, and I think to myself, right, I'm going to move that there, I'm going to do that there. He can do this. That's exactly how I think. That's it, like. I go, I know mission one, two, three, I know it's Fiji KTC, for example. It's always five objectives. Um, I know where my stuff set up sets up. I do TTS to make sure I've got my line of sights and, and whatever. And I'm like, okay, so my turn one if I go first, that goes out there, I've got my stuff in reserve like for my second wave already lined up. I've got enough stuff on the objective that I'm not gonna get shifted in one turn, which means my turn two, I'm gonna score my primaries. Happy days, and my turn three, I can get my primaries, and then I then I worry about turn four and five based on what the game's doing. But like I've I've already thought about all that stuff at the point that I'm deploying. So it's interesting that actually you're being reactive and successful being reactive, I might say. But it's because you are not entrenched in thinking that this has to go there to do this to do that. It's a very flexible way of thinking. I think. It's it's a weird one because there has been times where I've been absolutely left scrambling right. because my opponents uh, I'm looking at his 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 army and I'm like I have no idea what I'm doing here <laughs> and in that case I just I just go back to a kind of set procedure of stay in cover um, you know okay okay so to go back to the original point about scoring yes. Um, because <laughs> we've um, what, let's, let's speak about that. What, what okay. No, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Go back to that. How well set up, and you're very similar with how you did when you played Custodes, right? You know, not that long ago, and you are very similar with how you do this for um, CSM, especially with your demon allies. But I'll always put my um, uh, flame assisters in the open within six inches or at least within an advance to get on a, on a, on, a, on objective. an objective yep. Yep, yep, yep. and but only ones that I can hide behind because if my opponent then pulls something easy to shoot them off then I, 
Yes, exactly. So if I get first turn, then they do that. If I don't get first turn, then I position them within six inches of being able to get back behind cover. Yeah. One of my L's yep. somewhere. Yep. So that's that's pretty standard. So whatever happens, that scout move is going to push them. I'm either going to get up, get in an L or hide. If I've got a Coronas, yep. which to be honest, most of my games I do have at the moment, I'll probably just advance that up, toe slightly out of cover. Mm-hmm on an objective, a slightly in cover, sorry, on an objective somewhere or near an objective. Yep. Doesn't need to be on it if the sisters are on it. And then, obviously, this all, it's all dependent on what secondaries I've got. But that set me up quite nicely for turn two. Um, if I've got an advance and charge blade champion, I'll leave them like one inch away from the wall that are hidden behind. Yep. And then I'll roll an advance if I get high enough so I can move further forward. And stay hidden. Once I've pre-measured how far his stuff can move to get angles, yep. if I can stay hidden, then I'll move all the way up. If I can't, then I'll just move him against the wall. And then he becomes like a bit of a spring. So mm-hmm. it's a repeat. So I'll then throw the unit that's in the um, Peronos forward. Yep. And then that second unit that's hidden behind the wall somewhere will go into the Coronos. I'll, I'll definitely do that if he's got a lot of screening. If he hasn't got a lot of screening, then I'll I may rapid ingress them. The point is that the guy in the um, in the Coronas moving forward, he's the guy that's putting pressure on my opponent, that's making them shoot him, and kind of diverting all all my opponent's shooting into him. That's turn two. And the second unit that I'm throwing up there through the Coronos is turn three. So that buys me turn two and three to get the rest of my army into position to score points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then that's how I try and get ahead um, in primary, definitely primary, but also secondary. Okay, so... Um, because, yeah, go on. Also, I'm, I'm just trying to make sure that this is a very, like, focused... It's a really interesting episode. I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of questions. So if I miss them, please put your questions below. But for me, the thing I want to make sure that, um, is, so for your primary game, do you value turning off your opponent's primary as well as you value scoring your own scoring your own primary? What I mean by that is, if you can go and contest an objective, so you know your opponent's not scoring fives or fours, or whatever it might be, is that worth the same to you as you guaranteeing a four? So you won't be defensive waiting for them to come to you, you'd actually push out and contest their objectives. Because that's screwing up their game. Right? On the mission? In, in- uh, it depends on the mission, depends on... Yeah. yeah, because if it's the hold one, hold more, yeah. then it's it's not that relevant. Um, but if it's... Um, a hold one, hold two. If it, hold uh, yeah. Um, yes, yeah, sorry, hold one, hold two. But if it's... If it's one that I think that I can really lower them and really constrict them, and I think I'm going to survive a turn of their shooting on their objective, mm-hmm. then because my opponent doesn't have enough to clear my warden squad or something, then I'll do it. Um, but generally, I don't worry about constricting my opponent's um, secondary scoring abilities. So I won't go, I'm going to kill that unit in the there because that's going to score you points don't really do that i'll just kill their most valuable units and their their damage dealing units and then through that action i normally will limit their primary scoring you get what i mean so it's like through the course of this is absolutely fascinating because it's completely different how i how i play absolutely like i'm not not just saying that because i'm i sit there and i go right if they're playing tactical there is four kill tacticals, and there are um, however many twelve action based tacticals or being deployments or whatever. So I'm thinking, so I'm sitting there going, turn one, you might not be able to see very much, fine. But turn two, I'm setting myself up to go. What's his speed? Get rid of his speed. Gone. I don't, I don't want his speed. What's his chaff? What does he not want me looking at? Because it's going to be scoring him secondaries, and he needs to then draw something. That goes, ah, oh, crap! I need to put. A valuable unit back so i'm thinking what can i kill to ruin his game plan already early on but actually 
the way that you're talking about it is that you you kill the thing that he needs to win the game based on killing or survivability or whatever um it's such a different way of it's such a different way to play like, that, that i that i would play flipping that around flip, flipping that around do you find that your opponents score high against you in general do you have very many massive wins? Uh, do you feel like you do so i'm looking at the games at the moment no like if if, if i if i lose it's like an 85 86 game um but there's a lot of 50s a lot of 60s a few 70s in my in my list sorry in my um what's it called the tracker i can't remember what it is now in, talking, in, yeah in the app yeah yeah, yeah in, in the app so like i can limit them down so even if i've got wins here that are like 78 points for me winning but they've got 60 84 57 uh 95 68 like i i can control so j- just looking at the um lgt for example right where i went four and one it was a uh, 143 95 67 159 88 57 so i can i can keep them down i can subdue their scoring um if it's something that they've got weakness on a primary i can take them off that primary if not i can get their secondary point the secondary scores that's kind of my my initial plan i guess Do you do you find that when you're you're going through secondaries? Do you find that I know it's a difficult one, but not like looking for the app. Do you find that when you play against custodies, do you find that it's it's easier to to kind of control their scoring, or do you find it's harder to control the scoring than the other armies? I I think it's easier because of the bricks. So because custodies have one sixth of their army in a brick. And they'll have three or four bricks, guard, three units of wardens, unit of Alaris, whatever it might be. Um, if I'm forcing them to use that unit and not charge me, but to do behind enemy lines, not behind enemy lines, um, deploy terrible homers or investigate signals or one of the action ones, um, I'm okay with that because it buys me a turn to keep shooting them or get them in combat or whatever it might be. Ideally, not in mm. combat because of study strength in combat. But for me, yeah, it's uh, if I can kill the sisters, if I can get the Calidus, and I do go after Calidus assassins yeah. a lot because they're annoying. Um, it means that you have to use big bricks that I might not be able to get through to do stuff than not kill me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's interesting because I've often found that. For example, when 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 I played against you in the um, the RTT we went to before Christmas yep, yep, yep. in in round two, you killed all my chaff quite quick. Yeah. Um, and I won because of those bricks. Yes, you did. So I fought on on I fought on the middle. Yes. But I think it's a it's a tough one because. But, and that, and you forgot some rules, but let's let's not go there. Uh, <laughs> oh, thanks, man. That, that's now immortalised forever on this. So yeah, brilliant, fantastic. Dude. You forgot. You, for everyone listening, he forgot his rerolls. That's all. That's all. You, you probably would have won if you'd have remembered that. So, but so d- d- I think just, what... just, 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 the score was eighty four seventy eight, and there was a play that was eighty four eighty one. But I had to not get three to try and get the middle, and I, I couldn't get there because I forgot the rerolls. Um, so it was eighty four seventy eight, which to most people would be a close game, but to me it was bloody annoying because it's three on a trot that you've beat me by like less than sort of five six points. Yeah, yeah but I did. You have to admit, I, I've, my luck has been just ridiculous with the rolls recently. Yeah. But comes and goes. Comes and goes. But I think with custodians we lose our point scoring ability easier than most people. Yes, hundred percent. Um, and. And therefore, um, secondary points anyway, not primary. We're very strong with our primary scoring because we've got such strong units that are incentivized, like I said earlier, to fight on objectives. But secondaries, we need to kind of need to really structure. So I, I guess so, putting this into more in terms of. Oh, oh sorry. Go on, go on. I was going to say two things. The primary, because you can make sticky sticky objectives for one CP, makes primary scoring very achievable. Also, because of the um, mm. ability to pick up back up a, a guard model, 
and he picked back up a, a shield with four wounds, for example, he's really tough to then get rid of again. So the primary scoring kind of almost looks after itself, and somebody has to, like you say, put a lot of stuff in to try and stop your primary. Um, yeah. Usually, usually. So, yeah, so say, for example, people listening, if this is quite a kind of, you know, standard tactic, but if you haven't heard it, it is really useful. Um, if you've got a, um, a wall with an objective on the other side of the wall, if you've got a five-man squad on one side, put four of them hidden behind the wall, one of them on the objective. Save a CP. When that guy gets shot off the objective, in the command phase, you spend a CP to bring that guy back and put him on. Mm -hmm. If you then out OC your opponent, or if there's no one on there, then that is counted towards your primary for that turn, yep. because that's done in the command phase, and scoring is done at the end of the command phase. Yep. So then you, if you... If you do it, you can only do that one turn for that unit because you can only do that stratagem once per unit per game. But that's a cheeky little four or five points. So that's a you know if you if you're a beginner or you're listening to this and you've not done that before or not thought about that, that's great. It's also really it's also really good to give you good movement because the size of our bases are big, right? Mm -hmm. Coherency is a bit of a distance as well. It's like two inches and everything. So, so two inches you can put you less than five. Over five is two. You've got yeah. to be within two inches two. Yep. <clears throat> so if you got, say for example, if you put them down, our base is like one and a half, almost. I think one and a half inches or something, or forty mil or fifty mil or whatever. Forty mil. Yep. Forty mil. So then you you stretched it by two inches and the base size, or one point nine nine inches and the base size. So all of a sudden you've got a good good distance movement there, mm -hmm. added for free. So that stratagem is really important. Um, for primary. Other ways that you can safeguard primary are things like putting multiple units. So say for example you've got um, uh, one guard squad and you've got a sister squad or you've got um, uh, an angle from your opponent that can get on half of the objective. Make sure you're pulling your guys so that the guys with the most cover are what you pull, or the guys hidden from most units are what you pull last. Um, because you want to, if your opponent doesn't have his, his order of shooting correctly, he's not going to be able to shoot your final units. Yeah. So, it, 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 all those little, TTS, little things. This is where a TTS game would be really useful to show people what you're talking about, but I, I, hopefully this is coming across conceptually. So, if there's a big L, or a small L, and there's angles where three units can see one model, but two one unit can only see four models, then you pull the one model first because it means that one of the units won't be able to shoot you kind of thing. Um, and, it, and you force your opponent to have to make the right decisions. Um, and anything that you can make your opponent do, anything that you can dictate that play, is always really powerful, regardless of faction, but custodians in particular. People are people, right? And people make mistakes. Um, everyone's going to make a mistake at some point too. <laughs> Everyone's going to make a mistake at some point during a the game. There's too many facts, figures, dice rolls. There's too many things going on at once for, to get a perfect game going on. So um, give your opponent as many of these little micro decisions to make as possible. Yeah, and, right. you, know, you, you, you laugh, but that's definitely one of your gameplays, which is if you overwhelm them. <laughs> no, but it is. If, if you overwhelm the opponent to make decisions, they will make errors. And even if you're, like, you can't, you're not close enough, if, if you've got, say, if you drop two warden squads down and pop both four plus fill up fill paintings, you in theory that might be a waste. But now your opponent's like, God damn it, like where do I go? What do I do? And you then have something that survives, you can bring one back if you lose one and charge off and do what you might need to. Like you're you are very, very good at making people um panic make decisions. It's yeah. It also comes down to the fact that a lot of us seem to think that we need to... A lot of custodies guys that I've... I was watching a game the other day in um, a, a Bad Moon Cafe. I popped in to get a um, couple of paints. I saw this custodies player and I walked over. And um, it was turn one. I was just... I looked at what cards he had. And he had um, uh, investigate signals. Right. And, and then he had um, uh, no man's land, secure no man's land. And he was throwing everything units no. to 
towards all of these stuff. And I looked at his opponent, and his opponent was, his opponent was knights, right? right? Not not that topical at the moment. There's not many knights. But he was giving away so many angles for shooting. Yeah. And he was given, And so I think it's really important for us as a faction to realize when the points are not worth it. Okay. Re- um, re- really useful transition there. So we have sort of done primary because this episode's all about how you score points, right? So let let's say you're in the same position. You draw secure no man's land, no prisoners. Turn one. Was he going first or second out of interest? He was going first. Okay, so you're going first. You get secure no man's land, no prisoners. What do you do? What do you do? Because I think this is where people find it interesting, and useful, right? So it, it, not no prisoners. Sorry, it was investigate signals. Investigate signals. Sorry, investigate signals and um, investigate signals. Yeah. So I looked at investigate signals because that's potentially a big aid. Mm, what I would do is, hard, yeah, potentially a hard, very hard in turn one. But what I would normally do is, is, is I'd put the Calidus in, depending on your deployment, yeah. say, from, yeah. I don't remember which one it was, I think it was Dawn of War. I'd always have the Calidus near one. Mm-hmm. And then um, I'd usually have my Flame Sisters over the one side. So then I'd just advance and move them, or move them scout back and then advance them. Uh, not advance and move them, and then if I couldn't get the, the move to do the action because they don't have assault, then I just throw them forward and I'd just be happy with two points. Yeah. Um, I won't sacrifice. This. A, the guy had knights, so there's, there's maybe I would have gone down fixed to bring it down anyway. Yeah. But I think I would have done that and then I would have flown just thrown the sisters forward because they would have got me five points anyway on secure no man's land mm-hmm. the rest of my army is not really doing anything i'm just using them into a position where they're going to kill or get behind cover to then kill all these armages that i know are just going to flow forward but it would be the same principle if it was like marines right yep. if it was dreadnoughts coming on how how interesting how would you deal if you had investigate signals so and you had secure numbers you, you, you literally did what, what i what i um what i would do which is you don't have to go for all the points all the time so personally depending on matchups depending on what i see i always have a lone operative or i have chaff that can move fast but it's just it is it, one thing so a two point on investigate signals it's fine to recycle the card Secure No Man's Land is actually probably better in turn two anyway, because I'm pushing out with big bricks to do what the, do what they're going to do. So I'd sit on it um, until turn two. Now, that might be risky, but a Secure No Man's Land or an Extend Battle Lines, if I don't need it in turn one, to be fair, Extend Battle Lines, it's easy to get in turn one, but a Secure No Man's Land, it, I can guarantee my turn two. I can guarantee I'm going to get it in turn two. The way that I look at the game, and... This might be wrong, but this is how I look at it. You get 50 points for your primary, you get 40 points for your secondary. Most uh, There's a lot of secondaries which are 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, which means you need four turns of getting both secondaries to get maximum on your, on your secondary score, which means if you get a 2 on your skew no man's land, it's, uh, sorry, on your investigation signals, it's not the end of the world. Um, if you get a secure no man's land for 2, turn 1, and you get deployed teleport homers in turn 2, for three, there's your five, plus secure man's, no man's land, there's your ten. Like, the way, you don't need to get the four, is what I'm trying to get at. There are ways that you can save it up for later on, and two might be useful, and two might not be useful, but four it would be too much of a risk to lose too many models. Um, so yeah, I, yeah for, and- for, for me, it depends where the secure no man's land is, but I, I would definitely, um, if I had to push into the middle, for example, I'd much rather do that in a turn where I can take somebody off an objective, pop a warden, four plus feel no pain, hide behind cover, got my secure noise land, killed something useful. It's interesting because I would, I would, in the back of my head, I have certain objectives, uh, secondary objectives, where I am happy to potentially use a custodian asset to get interesting. a squad. That's, that's really interesting. Okay, like what? Well, for example, like um, uh, Storm Hostile. Okay. Or um, anything which 
is a secondary, which also has an impact on primary. So any, anything where I'm going on to an objectives or I to kill something on an object, I'll, ne I'll never do, unless it's going to win me a game or unless it's really tight, but I'll never do an action with a custodian unit. Um, unless that other unit has nothing to do, um, and so for I'll, example, I'll normally you won't do with the custodian guard or wardens. You do that with chaff. Yeah, it's too risky, isn't it? Because especially on W um, UKTC terrain, if you're doing cleanse, normally your opponent's got some form of shooting yep. or some form of speed that can get a line of sight or. So, for example, the space moons are everywhere now, right? Yep. If, if I'm throwing a unit forward and I don't have that screen protection, then you're going to get plasma intercepted to bust. Okay. So, um, what? it's not really worth it, but... I was going to say, what do you think about... Cause I'm, I'm trying to think about this like live, so... Um, apologies for a bit of a flip <laughs> But what would you think about going, actually, you investigate signals for two, your CP's probably better worth it? So don't even try and go for it and try and ditch it and get your CP back. I, mean, I, I would... CP is really important for us. But it, um, I'm not really spending a CP turn one anyway, so I'm going to get... Unless he can get lines of shooting on me, yeah. I'm not going to spend a CP for the whole battle round. So I'm going to get three CP at the start of my next turn. Which is um, four means sticky, bring somebody back, minus one damage in two phases. That, I'm, 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 true. Just, I'm, I'm sitting there thinking a two probably isn't worth, a two points of VP isn't worth it, but one CP is quite nice. say two points isn't worth it, but when I look on my thing, there's been about four or five games which has been one or two point victory. Fair, fair, fair. So, um, <laughs> like, looking at it back, I think it probably is. You know, I've got one loss where I lost by one. You know, it's all kind of the little decisions you make in the first two rounds can have dramatic impact on the round four or five. But I think uh, it's interesting because, for example, if I'm going into your army, yep. I know you've got an absolute crap load of scoring potential. Yep, yep, yep. You've got lots of demons. You've got lots of it's so much going, but you've also got a lot of killing power. Yep. Now I don't have either of those. So, I've got to get points so where like I can. Out how great an opponent you are to beat me by such a narrow margin. No, 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 no. It's, <laughs> it's because um, it's because I uh, I haven't beaten CSM apart from when I beat you, Holly. So it's brilliant. Quite happy. brilliant. <laughs> no, <I'm joking. laughs> it's it's good. It's it's just it's because you're you're here, so it's quite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do think that. Do you think other armies at the top, for example, leagues, they're exactly the same as you? Dari, which is really tough studies at the moment. But um, I, I guess this leads quite nicely onto list building. Yes. Now, the question is this has gone on for a while. I'm more than happy to keep going. But it, it like, to, so, okay, yeah, look, let's talk about list building. Let's talk about um, how you build a list, what you're building for. Again, we're talking specifically for tournaments here. So it's a five, to five game tournament. You're not sure we're going to face, but you're definitely going to face probably three of the top factions at the moment, unless you lose your first two. How do you build a list? Um, what would you, what would you expect to see? First of all, Eldar. Nicholas uh, Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So Eldar. Necrons um, at the moment. Which <clears throat> is Death Guard. Maybe Death Guard. Actually, Orcs. Orcs, maybe. But I would, so for me, it would be Eldar, Nids, Necrons is what I would expect to see. CSM. There's a lot of leagues around us as well. And there's there? a lot of leagues around here, yeah. Um, I guess I'm the same. Um, I would probably think that I would see another, maybe a Power Armoured thing. Oh, yeah, I'd expect very... to see a lot of non... In. I'd expect to see... Um, I, there's a lot of World Eaters... In the there arsenal. Are of actually. So, yeah, so I'd probably, um, with that in mind, I don't want to go through like a full list, but I definitely put a Kaladas in, definitely put a Draxus, okay, put in it, a guard squad. In, interesting. So you would still run Draxus over a second um, assassin 
for another lone operative that could be in a corner that could do actions. Mm. Can't move the same way the Kalidus can, but you still raid Draxus. It's the non line of sight. Got it. If she didn't have non line of sight shooting, I wouldn't. Um, the, don't get me wrong, the, the can't be shot out of 18 is great, it's fantastic. Um, you can put her in the open and she's not going to be hit, but it's the non line of sight that'll help give you that little bit extra clearance of chaff mm. point scoring of your opponent. How many times has uh, have I used her to, to nuke her, uh, you know? Rangers who are hidden behind a wall, or yeah, 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 warp yeah. spiders that are, that are just moved behind a wall or something. So she is fantastic. She sniped a Farsia before for me, so um, she's great that way. So I definitely have those two, and I'd have minimum two units of Flamer Sisters, cool, which seekers, interesting. And so then if points allow, I'd have a Prosecutors. And that's it for point scoring. I, I don't run. Laris, as everyone who listens to us is probably aware. <laughs> so um, I, um, that's that's all I would that's all I would run um, um, for it, utility. Yeah, it, it's so similar to this like, I came up with, which is you have got some some units of sisters, you got Calidus. I don't think I'd Draxus in my list, but Draxus is quality, um, and that's it. And then the rest of it is pure killing, pure sustainability. Um, that's the way that a lot of Custodes players are running it, I think, at the moment, isn't it? I, I, I think they have units of Laris, two man units of Laris to do actions, to do the from golden light into corners or behind or cleanse, or that those will be the ones they do with the actions because then they can be picked up and come back down again to do another action somewhere else. That's how I was thinking yeah. about using Alaris. If you run two man two, sorry, two two man units. In, both in deep strike, depending on your cards, they come down, do your action, they go back up. That's that. That was the only purpose I had. Yeah. yeah. Do you think if they put us down to one man units? Um, I've been thinking about this quite a lot recently because of obviously topical. Uh, Edislate potentially coming up, some whispers going on around. Lara's potentially coming down to one man. I do think that if they do do into one man, our entire secondary. And um, gameplay changes, and we will, as a faction, migrate to fixed. I completely. Um, and it, it, it's worth because yeah. I, I don't want to spend too much time on rumors and leaks and stuff. But we have spoke about this, and we both went, "Oh, interesting." We change our opinions, <laughs> and it is it is that one man units. Yeah, it, it will end up going fixed, but at the moment, um, you know, pre-slate you're still on two man units. I don't I think they're. Um, I think you can get the same. Um, you can get more more points from them um, through investment in other areas, or more points from other units invested in them. I should say, but um, I do um, feel that you know if, if we're moving away now from the list, and we're kind of looking all like a summary. Um, Ollie, it'll be interesting to hear what kind of your summary around this is, but I do generally feel that you know, custodies players we can often be in scenarios where we are really struggling to score points mm -hmm. or we feel like we can't score points and we are one of those factions that can score points just by playing the game almost as if there was only primary um, pick your cards and what you get is what you get. If you can do them, great. If you can't, then just kill. Just go to kill. And organically, you will score points. Mm -hmm. That, I think, is a really good basis to start with. And then as you get further into a game, you can gain a bit of an understanding, see what secondaries your opponent's already had, see what secondaries you've already had, you know how you can get to that point where you have a look, you have a like a feel of where the game's going to go. Mm -hmm. You like turn three, usually that happens. Um, then you can then make a conscious decision: Do I want to do this? Do I want to do that? But I would really strongly advise not to sacrifice or give up killing opportunities in turn one, two, or three in order to score points. Um, 
So That's, I would um, really advise not not doing that. So it, my my kind of summary, and I think that this is something I've learned from you, um, and and it's it, it's exactly how you summed it up there, which is be in the game because later on you'll still be there. You always have an asset ready for turn five. Whereas like I saw my haymaker, and if it's gone, it's gone. I would say that as an opponent into custodies, there are so many secondaries I don't want to draw because they suck. So a storm hostile objective, if you've got a unit of guard and a unit of wardens on the two objectives I can get to, I'm not sitting there going, hmm, I might be able to get that. I'm sitting there going, damn it. I, that's five points I need to go and get, and like it forces me to play. If I draw an assassinate and all your characters are in big squads I can't see, that's not an easy thing to, for me to go score. I haven't got a lot of precision. Um, there's not a huge amount of precision around in the game at the moment. If I draw, uh, bring it down, there aren't dreadnought spams anywhere. There might be one Calidus, Caladius. Um, there might not, there might be none in, for Custodes. There are, there's a lot that I can draw as an opponent that the way Custodes are, I can't get them. So those are me losing five points, ten points, fifteen points on my secondaries. Um, without you even doing anything. So, I think for me, yeah, the piece of advice would be stay in it. Don't throw your stuff away. Don't be so aggressive that you lose stuff and it's an all or nothing in turn one, two, three. See where it's planning out. See where your turn two, turn three is going and understand what you need to do to get your put points because your primary should take care of itself. Yeah, yeah, so it's not like other factions where you've got to then go, right, I need to sacrifice this asset to get on that objective to stop my opponent scoring. Um, or I need to, I don't want to move them over there, but I'm going to have to. You know, we want to be on objectives. It, it, yeah, it's we, want to be, we want to be there. It's worth saying that a lot of this we're considering, you know, you're running three or two units of wardens with a Vex. You're running at least one guard squad with a Vex. So your OC is... 15, 16 per unit kind of thing. Like, it's a big OC swing that somebody can't just shift you off. If you're not running the Vex, then it's OC 10, OC 12, and two unit, two, two models dead. Like, the, the, this is how we're thinking about the primary, that you've got the Vex, everything's OC 3, they've got a couple of shields in there, it's going to be hard to shift you. Yeah, yeah, and OC is absolutely massive. Um, for us, because we've got so few models, so Vexil is a vital, um, and you know where we're talking about getting your primary, scoring your primary. Um, we can still get easily outscored from units with ten man squads, which have ten man battle line of two OC each, right? Yep, yep, yep. yep. Um, but. If we're against units or armies which only have five man, yep. then we can outscore them with four models. Agree. And that is right critical. Oh, another good uh, um, around that would be an inspirational exemplar, the 10 point. Um, oh, yeah, the uh, 10 point enhancement. Enhancement, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that is absolutely fantastic. Um, to use um, it's a fantastic ability especially I mean, there's a lot of factions now which just spam shock tests yes and a lot of the time what they're doing is they're getting themselves in a position, a position to spam those tests on you because they know you're going to fail one right mm -hmm. in which case having that inspirational example is there to remove that bad shock but also the um, the Axillas mean that we never drop OC0. Yes. Always OC1. So remember that when you're on an objective, if people are spamming you and saying, oh, you've got to take a battle shock, the only thing that battle shock will do for us is move our abilities, is, is, is remove our ability to um, use strats on us and lower our OC, obviously. That inspirational exemplar will remove that. And then instantly that objective's are ours again. You can only do it once per battle. But I've often found that when I've I've got it in my back pocket and it's it's usually come in clutch. It's only ten points. So instead of running three flame assisters, run two squads of flame assisters and one prosecutor squad. And then you get your turn, yep. Um 
Yeah, you get ten. Yeah. It, 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 there's an entire episode we can talk about about enhancements, but that is definitely one of the underrated. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and so, j- just for those that may not be aware or whatever, the reason why the battle shock changes your OC to one, not a zero, is because of the way the vex works. So your OC characteristic when your battle shock goes to zero, but your vex adds one, no matter what, it doesn't change all OC to zero. And so your vexilla continues to mean that your unit has OC. It's a bit of a jank, but it's yeah, it how it works. Yeah, it doesn't change your characteristic to three. No, it's a separate one. thing. So, it, yeah, you always add one. So when your characteristic changes to zero, it just it's just it's basically just add one to zero. So you go back up to one. Exactly. Um, and it, so it's it's, 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 it's a useful. That's a very useful tip there because I don't think people. Well, I'm assuming most people know that now. So. Yeah, I mean, I saw something on um, uh, Reddit where there was a uh, uh, a lot of about should we have vexillas with guard yes. and the vast majority of people so the vast majority of people were voting no and I was kind of like oh my god um, <laughs> like you know obviously it's all all like meta dependent and all individual play style but you know, that is how it's ruled in UKTC anyway and that is how it's written rules as written you should have as many vexillas as you can one in every squad that can have one um, then obviously you definitely can have one on the wardens. You should definitely have them in the guard. Um, use use that guy as your shield guy. Take him up first. Bring him back with a um, stratagem if OC doesn't matter in that scenario. But yeah, you, you spam those vexillas. You may lose a little bit in your offensive output, but what it gives you in your scoring ability is humongous. You're never going to drop. To, to to no OC, you're never going to drop. Um, it, it's massive. I completely agree. I, th- I think I think that's everything I want to talk about tonight. Is there anything? Any summary? Any final thoughts for yourself? No, no, not at all. Not at all. I, I just think it's um um we're 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 coming up to a data slate. Yes. Um, but we we feel that this episode won't. Really change once the data slates happened, which is why we wanted to do this episode now. Yeah, it, it, it's a funny one. I, th- I think it's a follow up episode, and we don't we haven't done this before, and we probably won't do it again. But there's like a, a dangle of what next week's episode might be, which is kind of considering actual specific army matchups and kind of looking at or um, mission types and, and army types. So let's let's go away and think about that because I think we can build on this episode of how to score points into. Uh, insane alpha strike lists into vehicle meta lists into things like that and I think we could um, build and have like this as a two-parter um, but yeah let's, let's see what yeah, absolutely happens. absolutely yeah well, okay. um, if you got through to now um, you definitely deserve a drink um, <laughs> we did talk a lot <laughs> that, it was probably one of the more rambly episodes but it's a useful episode because I think oh, yeah, yeah, people yeah. don't so it I, I guarantee people will be thinking about that guy in, in the shop who was like, I'll throw everything forward, I need to get my points now. And not going, okay, how do I say, how do I survive until the end of the game? And it's a really useful tip. And I hope people appreciate that. Um, probably not. But <laughs> that's, our, that's our advice. <laughs> cool. Yeah, like, like, like we said, this is all opinion. All our opinion. And that's all it is. You caveat um, that every episode. Thanks so much for listening. <laughs> I'm carrying that every single episode, so um, <laughs> people can just take it or leave it. Uh, <laughs> but thanks very much for listening. Like I said, we, I said this every week, but I really do mean it. It means like, a lot to us, the amount of support we've had and the amount of people who have said, oh, um, thank you. You know, there are lots of people have been kind of WhatsApping me and saying, oh, you know, watch it, listen. It, it, it's great um, that there's this much... Um, uh, support for us, so we really do appreciate it. So please do like and subscribe if you haven't already. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, we'll um, next week if there is. A, well, I'll say it doesn't really matter if it's next week at all. But if there is a um, data state drop, we will do an episode around. That. Absolutely, I, I, on the day of the drop. Otherwise, it'll be back to our weekly schedule program. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 
All right, excellent. All right, guys, thanks so much for listening. If you got this far, <laughs> uh, poor you. But uh, <laughs> leave comments. Let us know what you think. Let us know how you score points. Let us know if you disagree with any of us. And we'll see you in the comment section. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Yeah, thanks all. Really, really do appreciate it. Take care.